Kingdom of Heaven is, in my opinion, a massively underrated film. I think it's a very well done movie about a fascinating period of human history, in, in my opinion at least. Crusades, the fight for Jerusalem, the struggles and the lives of honorable and less honorable men. It's about events which still have real consequences to this day. And while most of the action and the most spectacular stuff happens in Jerusalem and the area around it, some of the scenes that get to me the most are back in France. The cold winter, the bitter wind in the beginning of the movie scenes, those understated villages, those stories with a few characters, the soundtrack, I don't know, it just gets to me. But I'm a sucker for medieval Europe, so that's just me, and that's not what I want to talk about today. The thing I want to focus on today and talk to you about is this scene. King Baldwin IV of Jerusalem, also known as the Leper King, is welcoming Balian, the new Baron of Ibelin, recently arrived from Europe, with this piece of advice. A king may move a man, a father may claim a son, that man can also move himself, and only then does that man truly begin his own game. Remember that howsoever you are played, or by whom, your soul is in your keeping alone. Even though those who presume to play you be kings or men of power, when you stand before God, you cannot say, but I was told by others to do thus, or that virtue was not convenient at the time. This will not suffice. Take away the divine dimension, the things you may or may not believe in. They are not essential to the message of this scene, in my opinion. The core thing that I hear when I listen to this, when I watch this, is individual responsibility. There are many things out of our control, but the things we do willingly, no matter the circumstances, they are our responsibility, they are our decisions, and we have to own that. I recognize the wisdom of this advice everywhere. At the job, helping and supporting the people we care about, standing up for the things we believe in, when, how, at what cost. And a lot of the times, when it's decision-making time, there's a lot of people around us pushing us one way or the other, encouraging us to do this, to do that, giving us advice, telling us that this is the best thing to do or that is the best thing to do. And it is very easy in all this noise to lose sight of the fact that this is our decision. This is not a group decision. It just feels like it. It's our decision. It's my decision. It's your decision. It's his or her decision. However that decision will affect your well-being, your career, your life, your finances, your whatever, that is something that you and you alone will have to carry and live with. Not all the people that are encouraging you one way or the other when the decision was made. At work, your manager tells you that you should go into a certain direction in your career. Fine, listen to them, take their advice into account, but the decision is yours. A year from now, five years from now, when you will pay for that decision or reap the rewards of that decision, that will be you, not your manager. And you cannot say, but I did this because my manager told me that's a good idea, because nobody cares. It doesn't matter. It's your decision and you're going to live with it. Even when I do things together with dear friends, people that I love and respect and admire, I still have to remember not to let myself get carried away by the enthusiasm of the moment. Whenever, you know, in the exuberance of things, we feel like committing to something just because everyone is hyped for it, we still have to remember that the decision is ours. In as much as what we commit to do, in as much as what our part of it is, it's our decision, it's not a group decision. We have to make it, we have to live with it. I see a lot of people who do not think like this, who think that a lot of decisions are group decisions and who make all kinds of decisions for reasons such as they didn't want to upset this guy or they wanted to be nice or they wanted to be polite, quote unquote, or they just went along with whatever other people are doing. And later on, when they don't like that decision anymore, they complain and they blame other people because they made me do this. And most of the times, nobody made them do that. Because yeah, if actually somebody forces you, if you really have no choice, I get it, that's a different situation. But most of these situations are not about that. A lot of the times, people actually had a choice, had an option, a reasonable option, and they didn't make it because they didn't own their decision. They didn't feel, they didn't think like it was their decision, and they didn't take accountability for it. 
And most of the times this idea of, oh, I couldn't say no, or I couldn't say yes, or I couldn't do this, or I couldn't do that because I didn't want to upset X or disappoint Y or whatever, this is just an excuse. This, it's, it's an excuse. The real reason is that you're not ready to understand what you really want and go for it. So you're using this excuse of, oh, I'm just a nice guy, I don't want to ruffle any feathers, to just go along with whatever other people are doing. You're outsourcing your individual responsibility to external factors. And I'm not judging. Life is difficult, people are different, it's just, I don't think it usually ends well. If you end up getting on the wrong bus, and it's taking you in the wrong direction, not where you want to be, there's only so much that you can fake that, that you can pretend like that's what you really want before you can't do it anymore. And then it's regret and resentment and pain. And the more you wait to correct that decision, the more difficult it's going to be to get back to where you actually want it to be. Look, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't listen to people or take their advice or never accept any proposal or never consider what other people are telling us to do. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that whatever decision you make, in whatever way, for whatever reason, using whatever criteria, own it. Own the fact that it is your decision. You have to make it. Make it however you want to. Make whatever decision you want to. But you're going to be the one that lives with it. You're going to be the one who carries the consequences. You're going to be the one who are going to end up with the outcomes of that decision. The people who are all around you when you made that decision, they're going to move on and do their own thing. And not because they're bad people, but because they have their own things to worry about and their own decisions to carry. And like Baldwin said, You cannot say, but I was told by others to do this. Just think about yourself in 20 years as you're looking back on the decisions you've made. And think about a decision that you've made and why you made it. And you're going to think that, oh, I did this because I didn't want to upset John, or I didn't want to disappoint Mary, or I just wanted to be nice to my friends, friends who you haven't spoken to in 15 years, by the way. Is that going to be reason enough to make that decision, to live with that decision, to be comfortable with that decision? I don't know. That's something only you can say for yourself. I can say for myself. We can all say for ourselves. But that's it for today. Ah, one more thing, actually. Do you know who played the Leper King? Yeah, that was my reaction, too.